Hey peeps, Sarah here from Sparrow Springs, and today we are on the third and final part of how to draw a horse. This is my intro to drawing of how, um, just how I draw. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, and let me uh, explain the last bit here. Okay guys, not gonna lie, this is probably the most nerve-wracking part of the entire process for me, um, just because I feel like at this point it's it's passable for something and the, the detailing and shading and finishing can either make or break the whole thing. So the first thing I need to decide is just how I'm going to detail this. So I can go, I could go more hyper-realistic or so and like when you're doing hyper realistic you're talking about like hair patterns and like as detailed as like this one you can see like the individual hairs coming off the nose now if i want just a more general kind of detailing i'll just do more of shading rather than like stroke by stroke um now obviously when it comes to like the mane and stuff like that then i would do more more specific like hairs and whatnot but it is more of general general shading than um than stroke by stroke and like hyper hyper realistic detailing so i'll be honest um this part always freaks me out and i always psych myself out and i wait forever and i can't do that this time because i've already recorded the other two videos and i need to get this one done so um the other thing i'm going to be honest about is i haven't done a full detailed pencil drawing in probably Oh gosh, it's probably been like five years. So I'm just going to hope and pray that it's kind of like getting on a bicycle again. <laughs> so they say practice makes perfect. Well, I, yeah. And practice keeps you consistent too. So I am going to not psych myself out as much and I'm going to do more general shading rather than trying to achieve hyper realistic. So now with everything, now this is no matter what style you're going for, one of the most important things when you start detailing is maintaining a sharp point on your pencil. So this is going to help you like stay more even. And when you get more dull, then you start getting kind of like the more textured, uh, textured uh, pencil strokes. With um, with the keeping the pencil point um, sharp, that gets to be a little bit more difficult when you have the softer lead pencils like the 4 and the 6B. So I am going to be using like the softer lead pencils just so I can get a greater range of values without having to work as hard, but they do dull quicker. So I have my handy dandy sandpaper here to kind of keep that point down because if I keep sharpening this every time I'm going to go through like this much pencil in no time flat. So um, this will this will help me reduce the amount of need to actually need to sharpen it. So I'm going to stop uh, <laughs> procrastinating here and try and get at it. And I'll try and explain each bit by bit what I'm doing. But I am going to speed the process up along a little bit. Um, just because otherwise this, we could be here for hours. Um, I, I think the longest I've ever spent on a pencil drawing was, oh gosh, I think 30 hours on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Now that was like fully covered and everything, but it's, it's, it's a work in progress. So, all right, let's get at it. Um, I've also got my paper here. So this is used to kind of shield it so I can rest my hand on something without smudging, smudging the drawing as much. So now I've got my roadmap laid in and I am actually going to go in and erase bits so that I can uh, better, better control the actual, um, shading and whatnot. And I'm also going to clean up more of these messier edges. And then on the lines that I don't want to erase completely, I'm going to come in with my kneading eraser and just lift. And this is great so that you don't smudge it as well. Otherwise, if you swipe your hand across to get the eraser shavings off, it's like, hoo hoo, pencil lid. Now, keeping in mind my light here, 
that um, when I outline, I actually don't want these to be solid dark lines because my light's coming from this direction, but on the opposite side where I've got my shadow, I can darken those a little bit better. Okay, I've done the hardest part and I've started. And so a couple of things I just want to note in here is don't underestimate the power of leaving leaving a space um, untouched as in white because that, that negative white space is going to really help bringing the whole thing together. And then I did leave some bits in here just because like sometimes horses have like that a vein kind of running through their ear and everything and you can see it. I chose to make his ears maybe a little bit less hairy. Now I am going to come back in here a little bit because this would be mostly in shadow around the flesh. Um, and then I'll come and do this one again. But the hardest part's starting. So, and I am kind of going back and forth between my 4B and my 6B. I'll kind of come in with my 6B um, in places where I want it to be just a bit darker. Like in here, this is where the brunt of that um, shadow is going to fall. And you actually probably can't see it too much just because um, the light has a little bit of a sheen on it, but I will hold it up at the end and it'll, it'll show up a little better. Also, the other thing I should mention is um, when you're talking about brush strokes and different um, and brush strokes, <laughs> pencil strokes. So um, I kind of alternate, um, especially in these shaded areas. Um, sometimes I'll do kind of like a gentle cross hatching just to fill in those areas from all different angles. Sometimes I'll do a bit more of a circular thing. Um, in here I did more of just gentle strokes because there is some hair definition along the edges of that ear. So let's uh, let's keep going. Okay, so I have kind of finished off the ears and whatnot. I may go back and tweak things later on. Um, if you notice, I did take my kneading eraser and just kind of lift some of the um, gradient up in here uh, just because um, this part of the ear is a little bit more shallow so you would have more light coming in. But obviously once you get down to the deeper part of the ears, that's mostly mostly all dark. You're actually getting quite a bit of a reflection right in here. So this like this section here and this section are actually where it's the darkest, but the the light's reflecting off of the graphite, so that's interesting. Uh, next we're gonna move into the hair. Now hair is hair is a lot of fun, but it can also be really difficult. The biggest thing when you're drawing hair is just to remember those kind of long fluid movements. You can practice this on a separate piece of paper just doing little swirls kind of thing or curves and lines. And with horse hair, I mean any kind of hair really, the biggest thing is that it clumps. So you're not going to just have the like this beautiful individual strands of hair. It'll start looking stringy. So that's why we have kind of these clumps of hair all in the center. Now something else I'm going to note here is that some people start at different portions of the drawing. Now I like to work from top to bottom just because it's a little easier to work from. <laughs> um, otherwise if I start from the bottom up then I'm kind of smudging, smudging things as I go along. And then I can also see kind of everything that I've already worked on and how it compares to the rest of this. So let's go ahead and work on the hair. Okay, so we've got his forelock all drawn in. 
and I may go back in with my 6B and just darken up some of these areas because basically it's it's kind of hard to think about this in a, such a way but thinking of each clump is kind of like its own shape so you have the light reflecting off of this clump in a certain way and this clump and when the light's coming from this way well this one's in the way of this one so you've got shadow on this one um, and then also something else to note is like along here is kind of where I have most of my um, kind of highlight in the the forelock so when I draw that in I'm doing lines coming downwards so that I get that pointed edge right in that reflection and then when I come and do the other side I'm actually coming and stroking upwards um, in the other direction so you can kind of see in here this little area is a little inconsistent so I might go back and darken some of that area and fix things um, just to kind of make it more consistent to the lighting but um, that's kind of with the hair how I approach that and then also thinking that the shadow casts or the uh, the hair casts shadow on the horse himself so you also have to fill in some of these areas as well but you're not going to have those same pencil strokes of like hair kind of like so I'm going to go ahead and do that Okay, so far so good. So now I'm going to start working more towards the forehead and the eye area. Now, to me, the eyes are some of the most important things to get right just because you can see so much expression and almost like the soul of a horse through their eyes. So it's really important to get the the softness and the, um, the reflection off the eyes in such a way. Um, um, and also in here, like I'm going to be kind of referencing this one a little bit as far as the upper forehead, just with that taper, that taper that kind of comes off. You've got kind of like the flat of the forehead in here, and then it starts to just kind of curve, curve over the side of the head. So we're going to work on that. We're going to put in some shadows and reflections and whatnot. So again, most of our light's coming in off of this direction. So like this side of the face is going to be more more shaded and then we'll have some more kind of light reflection areas on this side. So I'm going to be focusing a lot on kind of like the the wrinkles and the um, lines around the horse's eyes because that really makes the expression. Okay, so we have the eyes and the ears and the hair all kind of messed in. And then, um, and now we're going to move on to more of the bridge of the nose. So I've got some pretty hard lines here, but in reality, these aren't, oh, well, this one's like totally off, but I'll fix that in a, just a second here. Um, but like, these aren't going to be super hard lines. There's kind of that transition from the bridge of the nose out to the, out to the cheekbone and stuff like that. So it's it's there for my indication but it's not actually going to be a hard line so and then also something to note that even though I'm not like choosing to do something that's like super hyper realistic I'm still kind of shading and moving my pencil in the direction of the hair because it will kind of mimic that without having to actually painstakingly put in each hair so there's that side of things. Um, so let's let's move on to, I mean, really this whole region in here, that whole um, part of the face. Now this is where uh, contrast is going to play a huge part in just defining those kind of three-dimensional shapes.
Okay, now we've kind of hit the next the next section that I rather dread most of the time, and that is the nostrils. So um, I'm going to take this one step at a time and just kind of, sorry, I'm tweaking in here. Anyways, <laughs> um, uh, the biggest thing right now to remember is just the, the dynamic shape that it kind of comes with the nostrils so like because the, the head is sticking straight out you're gonna have mostly light all on um all on the perimeter of those nostrils and whatnot so I mean it's gonna be kind of similar to how like how we worked on the ears and everything but still just kind of trying to maintain that shape and that character because see we discussed we're going with more of a a relaxed kind of um, kind of expression and relaxed posure. So with his nostrils relaxed, they're going to, they're going to actually be a little thicker in the fleshy area just because they're not flared and stretched out. So we're going to try and keep that in, in mind. And oh, here we go. It's like, okay, now like, I feel like I've kind of gotten into my groove a little bit and now I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> Okay, so we are done with the head, and I may go back and tweak some things about his nostrils in a bit here. Actually, I'll do it right now. <laughs> um, I'll just do it as I talk. But now we're going to go in with kind of the rest of the horse. Now, because I've actually kind of completed the, the main focus of the drawing, now the rest of it's going to be just a bit more subdued. So I'm not a subdued. There we go. The rest of it's going to be just a bit more subdued just because I'm not, um, it's, it's not going to be the, the part that's quite as in focus. You kind of have this natural like blurring that happens in the back. Now we are going to add some detail, but it's not going to be probably as painstaking as it has been up until this point. So, um, at, I'm still going to just remember where my lighting is coming from and reflect all of that within um, within these regions here. So I'm gonna start with the hair and then kind of work my way left to right. Okay, so I finished the majority of the drawing at this point, and this is kind of, this is kind of more of the fun part now that all the stressful stuff is over. Now I can go in with either my darker pencil or my eraser and just lift, um, lift in places where I think I want kind of less, um, less, uh, what do you call it, value, and then um, darken in the areas where I want a little bit more a little bit more uh, darkness in there. So I'm gonna go and just play with a couple of these lighting areas. Uh, 
All right, well, I'm going to call this one a wrap, and uh, thanks for joining me on this one. Hey, peeps, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun with this, and it's... <laughs> I guess it is a little bit like riding a bike. It's been a while since I've done a full out pencil drawing, but um, like I said, it was a lot of fun and I hope you learned something from this. I hope you learned something from just my process of things. So once again, if you have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you wanna be notified of when this full set of prints release, um, for the Banished Bear Wells collection, which is what this is a part of, then make sure you sign up on my email list in the description as well. So have an awesome day and I'll see you later, peeps.